Welcome back to class. I'm Michael Allison. We're talking about basic mechanical electrical plumbing documents. To get you back up to speed, this is going to be part two of this uh, lecture. And we're just talking basic mechanical electrical plumbing documents. In the previous lecture, we talked about how there's contract documents, there's drawings, and there's specifications. Uh, both drawings being graphic, specifications being uh, narrative or written documents usually. And so we're talking contract documents. Those are the things that are going to end up in both the prime contract with the client and the subcontract. So let's uh, look. There was two other documents we talked about. The schedule, meaning the schedule relating to time, and the delegated or deferred design. And both of those are uh, responsible party is the general contractor with subcontractor input heavily. Talked about some supplementary uh, documents that I was calling construction documents that were submittals, submittals being product information or another word for product data. We had shop drawings and manufacturers installation instructions and samples. There's a whole bunch of types of submittals. I wasn't trying to go into them all. I was just trying to give frequent ones. Uh, like there's attic stock submittals, um, warranty samples, certifications, anyway, all kinds of submittal stuff that uh, is, is worthwhile. I just didn't want to go super deep into it. I talked about test plans, logistics plans, uh, BIM and VDC. I failed to mention things like safety plans that are often required. Very rarely do I see them have to be uh, submitted, but neither would a logistics plan uh, very often be required to be submitted. But uh, definitely like safety plans, job hazard analysis, task hazard analysis, all really good stuff. Um, different uh, requirements like um, SDS sheets, all kinds of stuff like that. So let's, uh, I talked a little bit about my mentors, uh, some mentors advice to me to regularly create a habit of just reviewing the documents on a regular basis. He, he His suggestion was uh, block out an hour a day where you're doing nothing but making sure you are reviewing the documents, meaning understanding what you're building um, and just dedicate an hour a day to it. So where I was briefly going, but I hadn't gone and talked a lot about it was the various code books. So the image on there that you're seeing there is, I believe if I've done it correctly, the code books that Utah has adopted and so, but that that's sort of like this, uh, not necessarily true in all things, because the jurisdiction uh, having authority is the ones that adopt. The state does adopt, but uh, the jurisdiction can also decide uh, what they're going to, to some degree. I'm not saying they have full power to override the state, but um, they, they can, uh, by jurisdictional, require more and sometimes less than what's in the code. And so things like you're working um, when I when I say require a lot less rural parts of Utah I know require sometimes far less uh, and then if you're trying to get a permit for what was downtown and the amount of inspections or requirements they're going to require in some parts of rural Utah are very different than what would be required in like I said downtown Salt Lake City. So the, but you can see some of these there, IBC, IFC, IMC, uh, your, all these plumbing, mechanical, fuel, gas, international. What, what you don't see here is the NEC as well. So National Electric Code isn't listed in this, but uh, there's all kinds of fire related uh, codes. There's, there's lots and lots of codes and I don't claim to know them all. I'm not uh, I feel like I know code books okay, but uh, I, I wouldn't say that I'm even, I've spent a lot of time in them, but uh, I'm, there's people that know a lot more about the code than I do. So the point being, there's a lot of code requirements. There's also thing. so the idea here is that uh, the designers, the architect engineers, uh, have a lot more training, hopefully, in, in code than we do. In fact, their design is supposed to be 
meeting this code and then we're we as the general contractor and the contract subcontractors are supposed to know the code well enough to to uh, implement that and we talked about how there's two different sets of two of the pendulum of how much information you're getting from the designers right and the example we gave of the project at weaver state where there was just shy of 200 drawings and just over 1600 specification and that level of detail versus say what we got from the fiveplex where i think there was like 20 drawings well the fiveplex is going to require the things that aren't there the the, the information that's not there to be installed per code and you're looking at some of these here so it, it's worthwhile in my opinion to spend some time understanding code the building officials when they ask when they are, are citing something uh, in a non-confrontational way it, it's worthwhile asking them to educate you on the code um, they explain where they're coming from look those things up um, you could if you have a good relationship with a building official uh, call for uh, and you're out on site get get a consultation going early on and, and get some of their advice on some common uh, code infractions that they've seen in this type of construction that you're working on and try and avoid those uh, in advance so the the, the code is another it's weird because I don't know if I want to call it a contract document but it really is because most contracts are going to say that you have to install uh, or build per code and they're referenced so be interesting to see from a lawyer's perspective whether they're true contract documents but they definitely have uh they're they're definitely right there next to the the drawings and specifications for uh, requirements in fact if your building's not meeting code the the code book or, or the design is not meeting code your code book would usually uh pull rank on those drawings and the drawings would have to get updated okay so let's look closely at the, the drawings and from we're going to start again from general and then get really specific in our example so right now we're just doing powerpoint and we're just going to say okay let's look at the drawings from a high elevation view and there's notes plans elevations sections details schedules and schematics the one word in there that you're seeing again is schedules and this one i'm not talking about uh time I'm talking about another synonym would be list i think would be a good way um so i want to i want to bring up blue beam and look at that all right we're looking at that project at weber state and we're looking at the notes page for uh, the architect I and mean, there's all kinds of stuff on the notes page but uh, we looked at this briefly before but uh, let's look at it in more detail we've got abbreviations i've got some folks to be able to contact and the project team all their symbols so when we read through the architect's drawings uh, he explains the symbols here Got his code analysis piece here, the sheet index. Got some other notes. And even though the architect has a lot of notes, I think, the uh, architect would have put this together. He's got a whole section of general information right here. Very, uh, uh, And most of these right here, Some of it is for the actual permit process, and some of it's for, to help construction, and some of it's for both. So this is an interesting sheet to talk about what inspections are going to be required on the project. You never see that on a residential residential uh, project. You never get this this sheet. <clears throat> You'll get uh, you get something from hopefully the jurisdiction saying what they want uh, inspected so the but going into mechanical electrical plumbing they all have 
a notes page as well. So here's here's the notes for the mechanical. And we've got the same thing with plumbing. Not very many notes on that one. I'll bet the electrician has a lot. Oh, actually, not very many notes, just a few. So sometimes when there isn't a spec book, and maybe the project's not the fiveplex one that we've been giving and not this uh, larger project at, at Weber State, somewhere in between, there might not be a, a spec book still, but they'll fill up one of the pages with a bunch of notes and uh, that'll be like the spec book. They'll actually put parts of, of, you'll even recognize it sometimes, like parts of a spec, you'll actually see that they copy and pasted it into a note section. So it's possible on the drawings to have quite a bit of, of uh, general notes. In this case, that doesn't seem like a lot. So we've got notes, right? Now we've got plans, and let's go to... Uh, So this is plan, and, and when I say plan, again, it's, it's one of those words in construction that have multiple meanings, right? You're like executing some sort of strategy, and that could mean plan. And in this case, when we're talking about drawings, we're talking about uh, looking at something from above, and as if you're in a helicopter above the building, but they cut off everything at like knee height or something like that. And so the... <clears throat> Sometimes it's like hip height. I don't know. I don't know what exactly height you'd be. Maybe maybe uh, just cut the maybe just peel the ceiling off, and that's what you're looking at. Might be more more accurate. So, but uh, this is a plan, and we have different kinds of plans. We have a reflected ceiling plan. That's if you're looking at the ceiling. And we're looking at all kinds of information here, slab, annotated, all kind of stuff in the plan. Now, another type of drawing would be an elevation. And in this, you're standing on the outside of the building looking at something, or sometimes there's elevations of an interior wall or elevations of, of like a stairwell or an open space or but the elevation is you're seeing what the eye would see if you were standing in the room or standing outside the building looking straight on. Uh, so the this building's kind of curved, but you would see if you're standing outside, you would see brick and some glass and some paneling and uh, more glazing and, and brick. Uh, I forget what all that is, but that's what you would see if you're standing literally perpendicular to this this side of the building. And they're calling that the north. So if you're standing on the north, looking south, you would, you would. Uh, maybe that's worthwhile talk. Maybe explaining just a little bit here. The the north elevation is not necessarily looking north. It's if you were standing on the north side of the building, turned around, looking back at the north side of the building. That makes sense. Hopefully. So we've got the little partial guy over here, partial east elevation. Okay, enough with elevations. Let's talk sections. So a section is a cut through the building or a wall or some, some element or assembly, right? And so this is not something that the eye could physically see. <clears throat> uh, if you're, you, There's no way to cut the building in half. And, and uh, so this is... This is what the computer can do for you, CAD can do it. And so it, it takes a section through the building and opens it up and says, this is what you're seeing. And then we, we these things can get super detailed and we're, we could say, okay, now we're into a section of an M exterior envelope. We see the foundation and here's the inside of the building with uh, some, looks like we've got some insulation on the wall and some base course material and a slab on grade and lockers and some framing and ceiling and now you're into the next floor keep going up keep oh we're on the roof oh there's a parapet and kind of just doing a high elevation dive so we could look at this right here and say well that little a4 on a520 that's talking about this little area right here 
and this little area right here is, is going to be described in C4 on A510. So what does that mean? It's sheet A510, sheet A520, and it's detail C4. So I'm on A510, and we're looking at C4. And there's the parapet. And there's a lot more detail and, and description on how to build this parapet. And then we've got another detail that they want to go to, and that's A2 on A540. So detail A2 on sheet A540. Here's A540 and detail A2. And now they're talking more detail about uh, this this parapet cap and the, the substructure or sub, uh, I should say substructure, the... Uh, Anyway, the framing components, insulation components associated with that. Okay, now the, we have schedules. Let me find one in the architectural. There we go. Do you see that right there? Signage and plan schedule. Signage plan and schedule okay so there's gonna be a list here oh there's the list that's a schedule a list mechanical electrical plumbing they love schedules in their drawings and so let's go look at a mechanical schedule it's just a list of stuff actually a list, list of stuff it's the mechanical equipment listed out and so uh, plumbing is going to do the same thing, fire protection, electrical. These MEP trades heavily use the schedule. Now, I was talking about schematic as well. And sometimes the architect uses a schematic, but it's rare. I don't think there are any schematic type drawings. I don't know why he, the architect. So in the A drawings, no schematic. In the structural, I doubt they use schematic either. Oh, maybe schematic reference. Let's see what you got. Oh, not much. So, but in mechanical electrical, this these uh these schedules and schematics go hand in hand. So if we say okay, let's look at Okay, mechanical piping diagrams. And each of these are VRFs, variable refrigerant flow, I think is the F. <clears throat> and it's showing, uh, so what, what, what is it this, this thing is? Uh, what is it that all these little lines are? I'm not here to talk about how a VRF system works other than that it's uh, based to basically heat pumps moving refrigerant around and moving air across the coil, which is fantastic and, and uh, pretty new technology and, <clears throat> and uh, supposedly very efficient. So, but what is a VRF 3-04? We would come to the schedule. VRF a 3-04 and it is uh, the DO office room 226. It's a ceiling cassette. It's supposed to push out 390 CFM. It's supposed to get 50 CFM from the outside. <coughs> I don't know what ESP stands for off the top of my head, but there's a cute cooling heating. Uh, so it's 208 volts, single phase, 60 Hertz, uh, Mitsubishi and uh, these other notes, which are down here, apply. But kind of the point of getting here was in mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, fire protection, the use of schematic is really useful. And and folks kind of, when I say folks, I mean, I mean myself. This is the use of schedules and schematics is something... Uh, I didn't know how to do right away, and I don't think anybody ever showed me how to read it or or really explain how they come together. And, and so, but uh, with some experience on some really large mechanical electrical projects 
and being around some really good folks and being able to ask questions, uh, try to was able to fill in some of the gaps that I had in my knowledge. And so this is, uh, I love the, I shouldn't say love, but I really have come to appreciate the idea of the schematic as well as a schedule. And so when you come to mechanical electrical plumbing versus architectural, we're gonna see floor plans in uh, mechanical. So we've got a mechanical plan level one. And uh, just like just like the architect has notes on and call outs and stuff, they're using the architectural floor plan. Notice that the architectural floor plan is kind of like a layer that is not as solid or dark as this duct run right here. And so they take the what looks to be the ceiling plan of uh, from the architect. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not the ceiling plan. No, it's just a floor plan. And they draw in the the mechanical designer draws in uh, the duct runs. And you can see right here, here's a VRF sitting right here. Uh, they're, they're sort of similar to VAVs, but if you know what that is, but it's dealing rather than transferring uh, water as the medium, it's dealing with refrigerant to uh, move heat. And so the, <clears throat> as we look at how the mechanical designer does things, they, they, they draw and they label things. Uh, so this this duct right here is eight inch round um, SA. This is a 24 by 24 RA. And I can't remember off the top of my head what an SA is or an RA is. So what we would end up doing is coming back to their notes. And let's look at what SA is, RA is, and what this symbol looks like right here. Oh, duh, supplier. That was kind of done in me, returner. Super simple. I don't know why I didn't come up with it, but that's all right. Um, maybe I'm tired. Supplier, returner, <laughs> basic, most common stuff out of ductwork and it went by me. Sorry, that's a little embarrassing. Um, and then we have this guy right here where we've got, uh, what is that? Well, that's a flexible air duct. So that's eight inch round supplier. And what is that right there? That's a supplier diffuser. So think of like that's that's up in the ceiling somewhere pointed down. And this lighter duct, that's the that's the return air duct, right? And we'll get into more details. You don't have to understand all this stuff right now. My point is to try and describe how to use the drawings where um Sometimes on the architectural, it's a little easier to understand what everything is uh, because it sort of looks like what it is. And then on these, this looks like a square. And what is it? Well, you have to know what it is after you look up the VRF uh, 2-16 uh, return grill number one. Well, what is RG1? You'd have to go back to the schedule. So an RG1 is allowing 800 CFM in, and it's 12 by 24 is the, is the size of it. Um, so kind of the point being, there aren't any dimensions on here showing exactly what that register is, or uh, <clears throat> grill, excuse me. And so you have to come over to the schedule and use the schedule along with the drawings, along with the notes, along with the uh, the symbols to try and put together what all this means. <clears throat> and for me, obviously I didn't remember what supply air symbol was in return air, but uh, I use one better than that. But the, the point being, 
you have to put use multiple systems to be able to follow what's going on in this stuff. All right, and that's going to be true in plumbing. Let's go look at that for a second. Here's our here's our plumbing legend, our notes. So we've got. Uh, we'll open up uh, whatever this is. So they're saying that uh, that right there is a six inch round PRD. Primary roof drain. Six inch SRD. Secondary roof drain. So <laughs> got some roof drains there. What does SS mean? Well, that's a sanitary sewer line. This this stuff is three inch round. Note number four. What does note number four say? That's what rum, uh, root route waste and ceiling area. Okay. Now, as we talk more and more about systems and and uh, components and stuff, I'm going to be using the drawings and. The point of going through this exercise was to give you an idea of what you needed to pay attention to. So on the architectural, um, there's going to be a different set of information where it keeps diving in. Uh, so it goes from like floor plan to, to section to maybe more defined section back into detail, detail. And, and the drawings and the graphics and the notes next to the graphics really detail it all out in the architectural. But in mechanical electrical plumbing, it's more common to see a bunch of labeling like this and having to use legends and, and schematics uh, to be able to understand what's going on. So let's do, uh, maybe, maybe to tie this all together a little bit more. So let's go to, remember how we were looking at that VR that VRF. So here's our VRF schedule. And I want to know what a VRF is. Remember we talked about the submittals and we have the mechanical equipment here. So this is this thing right here is a VRF 1-02 and a VRF 1-01 and and so there's a they basically look like that and here's the information associated with it you can kind of see the uh, the refrigerant lines this is probably a condensate line I'm not sure what that is <clears throat> but I'd have to look at the we could go look at that in detail and see I'm curious Anyway, it's not probably not the time for that right now, but the uh, the point being, the we've got information from a submittal that's helping me understand from a schedule that came from a floor plan, uh, right? And so the floor plan sort of told me about it, but if I want to understand how the whole system is going to work together, then I want to be looking at the uh, schematic diagram. All right, let's do a schematic. Let's just, uh, hopefully this is fairly easy, but I do want people to understand how a schematic works. Let's draw this. All right, we're going to do a schematic of a, a dryer. So here's our dryer. We'll just call it DR. And let's think about the schematically how this works. <clears throat> so there is a uh, 
there's an electrical source for it. And that's usually the symbol for an outlet. And so let's just draw like, uh, there we go. So there's, there's our electrical service. And in most homes, it's a, uh, depending on what kind of dryer it is, it's either uh, probably 220 or it's 120 and it's got a gas line. So let's assume we have a gas line here. And we're gonna, we're gonna make that thing look a little different. Oh, it's over here. Sorry, guys. Okay, we've got a gas line to it. Dryer, what else do we need? We need a vent. So we'll, uh, we'll just say that it vents vertically. And that's uh, gonna, let me show the direction of air. And we're gonna say that that's a, a four inch. Is that the schematic? Is that what we have? We that <clears throat> I didn't label everything. I could have gone to the extent to doing all that, and maybe we should. So let's uh, label that out at 120 because we've got a three uh, half inch gas line. Uh, we probably should put in like a, a valve on that thing right there. We could continue to detail this out. The dryer has an HMI. So it, it's got a human machine interface with various dials and things. If we wanted to detail this out even more, there's got to be some sort of a, um, electrically controlled act, uh, valve that opens up the, the gas. It's got to have an igniter. Uh, it's got to have a motor and some control panel, uh, some control lot, uh, uh, a control system to it with, with various uh, settings and whatnot. So we could continue to dial this out, uh, detail this out. But the point being, this is a really simple, simple schematic. And does it show it in plan view? No, it's not a plan view. It's just a schematic showing kind of how this is working together. So when you compare this thing and one of those, this drawing doesn't show anything in plan view. It's not meaning that these are all lined up in a nice little row and that the pl the piping goes like this and then goes like that. It doesn't mean that. The schematic is just saying that uh, this is this is the components associated with the system and and that's that's sort of the idea of a schematic. And we could get more detail. I don't even think a schematic would go to this the level of detail. Maybe. Who knows? But the point being, let's go look at it from our our uh, our small project, our, our multifamily. Okay. Multifamily, we've got, there's no... When we look at this multifamily project, there is not a notes page for the electrical and the plumbing. In fact, this is it. This is the notes page. And I'm not saying that sometimes they write their specs right in it. That's kind of what you're seeing right here. But this is schematically drawn in that they want a light fixture right here. And that's pretty accurate for the location. And it's written in plan view. But there's no reason for the electrician to run this in the wire from here to here in a nice wide arc over like that. The, even though it's drawn like this, it I would say that that is a schematic in nature and it's just showing relationship. A switch on the wall 
tied to these lighting, this light right here, with a switch on the wall there and a switch on the wall there. So it's saying these three lights are controlled by these three switches. And it should be pretty accurate for where the the light fixture goes, but the that's all we're really getting. So kind of a, an easy schematic there is what I'm trying to show. That even on this residential, they use the idea of of the schematic. It's not not a it's a representation that they're connected, not really how the wire would go. All right, let's go back to our schematic we just drew and let's let's kind of show more detail here so this is in schematic form and uh, we're just going to give this a I don't know if this is really the symbol or not but let's finish off our schematic here and we'll call that the uh, that symbol for me is going to be the gas meter And that guy right there, we're going to take it and we're going to schematically show it going and we'll do uh, So we'll say that's the mechanical room panel. That's good. We need uh, we need a little something there to finish that off. We'll do this. Nah. So that's going to be our uh, outside uh, louver kind of uh, one-way directional air thing that's going to open and close. So schematically, I like our, our little schematic here now, kind of showing what it is. I'm missing kind of a piece in my schematic, I, in my opinion. Uh, I like, <clears throat> I might decide that we need to show some sort of pedestal down here or or something that this bears on but right now it's sitting in space and we're not supposed to be necessarily drawing all that for a schematic but uh, if there is this uh, interface there meaning if there is a washer here and we did a washer right next to it we would need a couple drain lines and uh, so we would need one underneath here, and we would need uh, need another drain over here. And anyway, the point being, uh, sometimes even though it's not touching it, it's still using it. So this this washer uh, needs a drain underneath the uh, for <clears throat> uh, emergency spill or something like that. And so even though it's not physically touching. It's still part of the schematic where all these other components are physically touching. All right, cool. Thanks for joining with me. Appreciate it.